All right, let's go to Revelations chapter 12. Okay, in the book of Revelation, chapter 12, verse 17, it says, And the dragon was wrought with the woman, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which kept, keepeth the commandment of God, and hath the testimony of who? All right, now tonight we're going to be, we're going to be teaching about some of the things that's going to happen in the last days, okay? So I want each one of you to understand that what we what we're gonna give you, you can actually go back and study it for yourself, okay? Now um, the scripture tells us in the book of Revelations that it talks about the testimony of Jesus Christ and what's gonna happen to those people. Now what I want you to do I want you to go to chapter 19 also. And I want you to look at verse 10. It says, And I fell, I fell at his feet to worship him, and he said unto me, See thy do it not, I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy, all right? Now, one more scripture I want to give you before we move on. It's in the same chapter, Revelation 19. It says this, verse 4. Excuse me, Revelation 20, verse 4. It says, And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon his forehead. And in their hands they lived and reigned with Christ, a thousand years. And what I want you to notice, they were beheaded for who? The name of Jesus. Now, understand this. Um, everything from this point on is going to have to do with Jesus um, Christ and the people that are witnessing for Jesus. All right? Um, the people that are not witness for Jesus, now, <laughs> according to the Bible, are not a part of the kingdom of God. Um, it's talking about what's going Every scripture I read to you pertains to a certain group of people, people that are actually testifying about Jesus. All right? Now, I want you to go to the book of Joel. Book of Joel. Joel chapter 3. And um, tonight we're going to mainly talk about what's going to happen to Israel in the future. About future events, what's going to happen to Israel, all right? Um, and at the same time, it's going to end up what's going to happen to everybody else, all right? But right now we're going to talk about what Israel is going to have to go through, all right? In the book of Joel, chapter 3, now God gave Joel a prophecy about future events that haven't taken place yet, but they're going to happen during our day, all right, during our season time. Verse 1 says, Behold, in those days, for behold, in those days, 
in that time when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem. I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage, Israel. Now, if you got a, if you got a map, a lot of you have a map if you got a study Bible, you can go and look in your map and the valley of Jehoshaphat, it's a lot of maps signifies, that's where the battle of Armageddon is going to take place. That's where it's going to take place. The last battle against evil and Christ in the valley of Jehoshaphat, all right? And that's why God is saying, I'm going to gather all the nations there. In other words, um, God is going to, you remember how we was telling you last week how God said that Jesus was going to be birthed in Bethlehem and how he got Jesus there. How? By taxation. So that he had to go back because Jesus was living in Nazareth. So he had to go back to his hometown to be taxed. And that's what, not Jesus, but Joseph and Mary, what Jesus was. <laughs> he wasn't born yet, but that's what he was. But anyway, that's how God did well, what, what God is doing, everything you see now that's taking place, even with, um, okay, one of the major things that just happened that the Lord prophesied was this. What happened? And America got it started. Go ahead. Oh, hey, hey, hey. Mike. <laughs> I had to thank myself. <laughs> well, one of the major things just happened, and a lot of people... Don't even know it happened, but it just happened. And the Lord used this president in America to get it started. What was it? Recognizing Jerusalem as the capital. Right. Recognizing Jerusalem as the capital. For years, Jerusalem was not the capital of Israel, um, recognized by no nation. But all of a sudden, God, that's why I, one reason why I know God, uh, Donald Trump, God had to do with him put putting him in office. I don't care what nobody said. I don't care what the multitude. God had him to be in office um, for a certain reason. And what was happening was God used him to recognize Jerusalem as the capital once again. Because everything is going to center around Jerusalem. Matter of fact, if you can take this, Everything is going to center around Jerusalem. And it so happened that Israel is in. So everything, so Jerusalem had to be in the right place, all right? And that's why in the, later on you're going to see why. So here he says, I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. Now, what the Lord is saying here, the Lord is telling us what's going to take place because of how the world, other nations, are going to do Israel, all right? And then um, verse 3 says, and they, well, we come that way. Let's go to Zechariah 14 right quick. Zechariah 14. Okay, in the book of Zechariah chapter 14, verse 1, it says this. It says, Behold, the days of the Lord coming, and thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle. That's, now, just what we read in the book of Joel, it's the same thing God is saying. God prophesied to Zechariah the same thing that he prophesied to Joel. He says in verse 2, For I will gather all nations together, against who? To battle. And the city shall be taken, and the houses rifled, and the women ravished, 
and half of the city shall go forth into captivity. And the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. All right? Now here, here let's start right there. Here the Lord is actually saying what's going to happen. He's saying that all na every nation, there's going to come a time when every nation that hates Israel is going to fight against Israel. Now the thing about it, not every people, not everybody living is going to be in that battle. Only the soldiers are going to go. They're going to Israel, and their purpose is to destroy and take over Israel, all right? So th that's what's going to take place. Now, today, everything, well, let's do this. Let's go to the book of um, Romans right quick. Chapter 11. Just walk through this. Romans. Chapter 11. You hear a lot of time people talking about the last days. And these are the last days. And there are some things that was going to signify that we, come in, we are coming close to the end. Uh, whether folk believe it or not, we really are. Now, um, in the book of Romans, chapter 11, let's see where we want to start at. Okay, let's go to verse 19. It says this. Thy will say then, the branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. Now what this is saying is God is saying when Jesus came, he went to the Jews first. And the Jews rejected him as their savior. So he turned to the Gentiles. So this scripture is telling us that when it talks about in verse 19, the branches were the Jews, they were, the Lord turned away from them because they turned it away from him. Then he came to us. The branch was broken off and then we were grafted in. The Lord gave the Lord gave the Jews a chance to be saved first. They rejected him, so the Lord come to the Gentiles, all right? And then the Lord says in verse 20, well because of unbelief they were broken off, thy standards by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. He says to us as Gentiles, don't get prideful like we some special thing because the reason why the Lord came to us was because the Jews actually rejected him. All right. Now it says, For if God spared not the natural branch, which were the Jews, take heed lest he spare not thee. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God on that which fell severity or salvation, but towards them, on them which fell severity, but towards thee, goodness. If thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou all ship, so shall be what? Cut off. So he's saying if we don't stay in his word, don't walk according to his word, we're going to be cut off like Israel was, okay? Now, what I want to get to, um, verse 24, it says, For if thou were cut off, if thou were cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and were grafted in, contrary to nature, into a good olive tree, how much more shall these, which be the natural branches, be grafted into their own tree? And what he's saying is this. He's saying if we, the Lord, this is styling us as the wild olive branch or tree, all right? We were wild, and the Lord cut the natural tree and going to graft us in. If you don't know what grafting is, it means to, a lot of time when people want to um, take one plant and attach it to another, what they would do, they would cut that plant and take the other plant and attach it to it and then make sure they seal it or tape it real good so that the, tent, the, the trees can begin to bind together and grow together, all right? And a lot of people do that with, like, 
You ever heard of crab apples and stuff like that? That was one fruit cut off from one tree and connected to another tree. And that's the way they got there. So what we were doing, it was saying that we were wild at, at one time wasn't a part of the tree and we were cut in to the natural tree and grew. Then how much more the natural tree, which is Israel, which is going to be put back in, is going to grow. Now to make it plain and simple, he's saying this. There's a time coming, and it now is, where the Lord is actually turned back to Israel. Well, how you know he turned back to Israel? Because now Jerusalem, the capital city, is being recognized. And you're going to find out the main thing is about the city. You're going to find out the city of Jerusalem. The Jews too were mainly the city of Jerusalem. So the one of the final signs of Jesus coming was when Israel, when Jerusalem become capital again. Now, how many of you don't understand that? And that's why it was such a fight against all these other nations when it when America decided to make Israel the cap Jerusalem the capital again. Did y'all notice all those nations that spoke out against it? Because they didn't want, they, they don't want to recognize Jerusalem as the capital because when you recognize Jerusalem as the capital, then you say the Muslims are wrong. You saying the Muslims, why? Because see, Jerusalem is acquainted with Israel. And that's why. So what God did this thing. So now, the reason why he did it, because he's turning back to Israel now. He's, what he's beginning to do is put more focus on Israel now because he's going to bring them back in. But in order to bring them back in, there's things that they got to go through, all right? Okay, and one of them is what we read now in the book of Joel and then Zechariah. So let's go back to the book of Zechariah. Now, if you don't understand that, uh, ask, feel free to ask questions because this has to do with you. Now, we're going to be teaching on Israel tonight but it, it has to do with you also, your salvation, and whether you're going to heaven or not. All right? So now let's go back to Zechariah chapter um, 14. It says this. Zechariah chapter 14, verse 2 again says, For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken, and the houses right, for that means messed up, Torn down, broken down, plundered, and the women ravished, and half of the city shall go forth into captivity, and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Meaning the, the small amount shall not be cut off from the city. Now, I want you to go back to the book of Joel. Joel chapter 3. Now remember these are two different prophets that the Lord is giving, showing the future of what's going to happen on this earth. Now in the book of Joel chapter 3 verse 2, he told prophet Joel, I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the city of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them there for my, what? for my people and for my heritage, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. And then it go from three on, it goes into detail of what happened. What they did, it says, number three, and they have cast lots for my people and have given a boy for a harlot and sold a girl for wine that they might drink. And what it's saying, what the Lord is saying to us, what the nations have done to his people, Israel, all right? Okay. And then he says, verse 4, Yea, what have you to do with me, O Tyre and Zidane, and all the coasts of Palestine? Will you render me a recompense? And if you recompense me swiftly and speedily, will I return 
your recompense upon your own head. Now here what he said, he's talking to a proud, a proud group of people like this. Okay, God brings judgment on you by causing something to happen. Okay, I put it this way. God brings judgment on you, say, I'm going to tear down your house. So you go back at God, I'm just going to build a building better. And God said, I'm going to tear down your big and better house faster than I tore down the other. That's what this is saying. That's the attitude that people have. Well, God, you did this to me. Well, I'm going to come back at you. And God said, I'm going to. And that's why he said, he says, and if you recompense me, swiftly and speedily will I return your recompense upon who? Upon your own head. Now, um, now, what's happening is the Lord is actually getting the people ready for battle. Now, what I want you to do, I want you to look at verse 9. It says, proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Okay, what he's saying here is tell the Gentiles, that's all now speaking Jews, to do what? He's telling Russia, Germany, China, India, all these nations that's going to participate, that's going to rise up, Saudi Arabia, Syria, Egypt, he's telling all these nations to prepare for war. In other words, get your soldiers ready. Get them ready to prepare for battle. All right? Okay, now, he says, Proclaim ye the, among the Gentiles, prepare war, wait, wake up the mighty men, let all the men of war draw near, let them come up, let them come up, beat your plowshares into what? And your pruning hooks into, let the weak say I am. Now wait a minute. He said to them, make your weapons of war. He's saying you take your plows that you that were created from your iron and you melt your iron down and make swords. What he's saying is make your go get yourself, get your stuff together. Get all your technology together. That's what he's saying. He's telling all these nations to get all your technology, everything you can come up with, you whatever you got, you know, whatever you think you can use, get it all together. Because the battle is on, about to be on, all right? That's what he's saying. To, to Now, notice who he's saying it to. He's not saying it to Israel now. He's saying it to the Gentile nation, all right? That's the non-speaking Jews. Then he says in verse 11, Assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathens, and gather yourselves together around about. This thou cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord. Let the heathens be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. Remember we talked about Jehoshaphat? For there will I sit to judge all the heathens round about. And see, that's where they're, going, they're coming to surround Israel. And they're going, all of them going to end up in the valley of Jehoshaphat. Now you remember, if, how many of you know anything about D-Day? I know some of you does got to know about D-Day. Y'all really don't know about D-Day? About the allies come together? Whoa, man. Y'all went to school, right? I tell you what y'all do. Go back and find out about what D-Day is. D-Day was an important day. As a matter of fact, it was a day that God moved miraculously. But you don't hear much of that part. D-Day. You, you don't hear much, of, much about that. But God did a, did a magnificent move on that day. All right? Okay. Now, he says, but anyway, in verse 12 it says, Let the heathen be awakened and come up to the valley of Josephat, for there will I sit to judge all the heathens 
round about. So what God is getting ready to do, God, God is getting ready to align everything up so that this battle of Armageddon is going to take place. So now we got Jerusalem is being recognized as the capital. But notice, not by every nation. People are still, even people in this country is fighting against it. But you know what? They're not going to stop it. Why? Because it's the Lord's doing. It's, it's, just, it's just like Jesus was born in Bethlehem, all right? Not nowhere else. Okay, God is doing this, and man is trying to interfere in this, all right? So, um, now, what I want you to do, let's go to Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2. And see, all these things, folk been putting this stuff in song when it was, ain't nothing wrong with that. But if you don't understand what this means, like, blow ye the trumpet in Zion. Gerald chapter 2, verse 1. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh, for this is nigh at hand. Now, this is the Lord's second event. This, okay, the rapture have gone. This is the Lord getting ready to come back. He's getting ready to come back. And he ain't coming. He's not coming back like he did the first time. He's coming back for a reason, all right? He's coming back to do battle. Now, it says this. It says, blow ye the trumpet in Zion. Sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord cometh. It is nigh, is near at hand, all right? And then verse 2 says, a day of darkness and of gloomness, a day of clouds, and of thick darkness, as the morning spreads upon the mountains, great people and strong. There has not been even the light, neither shall be any more after, even to the years of thy generation. Now let's stop right there for a minute. So now it's talking about another army that's coming. Now I want you to, okay, where we at now, the nations are being called together. They don't even know it, but they're being gathered together to fight against Israel, all right, to really try to wipe Israel out. Now, I want you to go to the book of Isaiah. Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 63, all right? Isaiah chapter 63. Isaiah chapter 63. Okay. Now, now I want you to uh, picture this in your mind. The nations, okay, have begun to surround Israel. They begin to battle against Israel. All right, the armies of the world that's going to battle against Israel. All of a sudden, they are surrounded, and their city is being demolished. People are being wiped off the face of the earth, cities and towns, because of what the devil is leading people to do. Now, all this is taking place in Israel. Now listen to this. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 63, Verse 15, it says, Look down from heaven, and behold, from the habitation of thy holiness and of thy glory, where is thy zeal and thy strength, the sounding of thy bowels and of thy mercies towards me? Are they restrained? Now, this is Israel. This is what Israel is going to do during this time. They're going to start praying. They're going to start calling on God for help. All right? So here it records it, what's going to take place. It says they are asking God to look down from heaven and help us. To, they, they, they're really begging God to come to their rescue. They're asking God. Are you holding back? 
Are you, why are you restraining from us? Verse 16, doubtless thou art our father. Through Abraham, though Abraham be ignorant of us, and Israel acknowledge us not, thou, O Lord, art our father, our redeemer, thy name is from everlasting. Now, what we want you to do is see what these people are going through, how desperate they are. Now, in verse 16, what they're saying is this. They're saying to God now, even though we are ignorant of Abraham and we didn't acknowledge the Lord, we didn't acknowledge Jesus, refused to. Aren't you still our father? Aren't you still our redeemer? For some reason now, they're beginning to come to their senses of understanding who Jesus is. Now, right now, as a nation, Israel is not there. They still don't believe that Jesus was Savior, but that's going to change. Verse 17, they said, Oh, Lord, Oh, Lord, why has thou made us to error from thy ways and harden our hearts from thy fear? Now, what they're doing, they're so desperate, they're blaming God for their backsliding. They are, they, why, why you allowed us to go back on you? They, uh, what I want you to really understand is people in a situ, such a desperate situation that they don't know what to do. And, okay, they're hearing what bombs and they, all over the place. They're running Everywhere they go, the cities are being torn down because of the nations rising up against them. Bodies all over the place. I mean all over the place. Out of windows, on floor, tore apart. Babies, um, girls, boys, uh, all over. A, a city where nothing is whole left. So now they're calling on God for help because they can't do it. And now they, what they're trying to do here is actually ask God, why you allowed us to be so evil? Why you allowed us to reject you? You know what we were doing. Why didn't you do something to change us? But let me tell you something, folks. God don't ever make nobody do nothing. Whatever you want to do, he'll let you do it. But you're going to pay for it. So this, but remember now, this is, this is the last battle that's going to be on earth. It's going to be against Israel. It says, okay, return for thy servants' sake, the tribes of thine inheritance, the people of thy holiness have possessed it but a little while. Now what they're saying, they're saying, wait a minute, this land that you gave us, the people of now, uh, Israel, we your holy people, we haven't been here but a little while. That's what he said. We haven't been here but a little while. But then he says, our adversaries have tried it down thy sanctuary. And what, we, what they're saying now is, Lord, it's the adversary's fault that destroyed our sanctuary, that caused the abomination. Because, see, there's going to be, in the midst of the sanctuary, the nations that are against Israel going to go there and offer up an abomination. Now, let me tell you, some folk claim that it's going to be a pig. They're going to offer a pig in the sanctuary. But whatever it's going to be, the Bible don't say a pig, all right? It's just said abomination of desolation. Whatever it be, it's going to be something that's totally against God, whatever God said. God told him to offer up lambs and rams and stuff in the sanctuary. But this, this group is going to offer up something that's totally opposite, just to say to God, in your face, all right? That's how bold they're going to be, because they're going to be guided by the devil. It says, so... It says, we are thine, thy never, never bearest rule over them. You never guided them. They were not called by thy name. Now, he, he, what they're doing now, they're praying, telling God, these Gentile people that's destroying us, Lord, they were never your children. They were not called by your name. Now, remember, these, this is a desperate group of people that the, this is part this is what's going to happen in the battle of Armageddon, all right? Some things going to happen. So now they're praying. They're praying, asking the Lord, Lord, we need your help. 
We need you. We need you. We can't do nothing. All of our technology, all of our air force have been wiped out. Majority of the Jews going to be wiped out at that time as a population. Only a remnant, the Bible says, small amount of Jews going to be saved. The majority of them going to be killed. They're going to be. They're, no matter how smart they are and how good they are in battle now, that ain't going to help. They're going to come down. So um, the remaining are going to start praying, asking the Lord to intervene to help them. And then it goes over into chapter 64. Oh, that thou would rent the heaven, that thou would come down, that the mountains might flow down at Thy prayer. Lord, if you just open up the heavens and come, Lord, we need help. We need, they, they are really in this place. As when the melting of fire burned, the fire caused the water to boil, to make thy name known to these thine adversaries, that the nations may tremble at that. And what, the, what they're saying, Lord, we want you to move for us so mightily that your, all these nations that do not like Jesus, that would refuse, all these nations, okay, what they're doing now, they're saying do not like God. But it's all about Jesus. Don't you understand that? We want you to show them that you ain't playing. We want you to show them that you are God because we need your help. So these folks are praying. They're, they're desperate. Now in verse 3 says this, when thy did terrible things which we look not for, He's what they're saying here now. We want you to show them the things that we didn't look for that you did for us. How my, when you shook the mountain, when you did miraculous things to get us back in line, when you did awesome, we want, we want you to show them that there is a God. Because these folk that got to the place now, they don't believe there's a God. That's why they rise up against. That's what Israel doing. It says in verse 4, from since the beginning of the world, Men have not heard, nor perceived by the ear. Neither have, <laughs> boy, Lord Jesus, have the eyes seen, O oh God, besides thee, what he has prepared for him that waiteth on him. So they, they still praying now. They still praying, and they're calling on the Lord, all right? Now, when you finish, when you, you read this whole chapter, because they're, they're, right now they're desperate. They're called, they're, they don't forgot about themselves. They forgot about their weapons. They even forgot about the nations that could help them. Now they found out that nobody could help them. So now they're crying, they're weeping, they're doing all kinds of things, desperate things. They are in a desperate place. And they know that if they don't get help from heaven, there is no help. They know that for sure. Nobody can convince them that the United States or anybody else can come in and deliver them now. For some reason, they have come to the understanding of God, only you can do this. Now, who don't understand that? Any question before we move on? Go ahead. Um, Apostle, is the Battle of Armageddon going to lead up to World War Three, or is that... You know, man talking about World War Three. That's man. That's that's that's, and they are. They talking about World War Three. World War Three. This is this. Okay, that's a good question because a lot of folk. They, okay, it's like this. People believe more what man says than what the Bible says. Really, majority because they don't know what the Bible says. Y'all don't even know about this. Don't know you've heard about Armageddon and the battle, but you don't know about the details. And I thank the Lord for revealing this through the scriptures, what's gonna actually happen. This has nothing to do with World War Three at all. The matter of fact, the world is not gonna be against itself. The world is gonna be one against Israel. Alright? That means all you unsaved folks sitting in here, if you if if that happened now, you was a part of the army. If you was a part of the army and you were against Israel, you would be hooked up with Germany, Russia, the rest of these folks, and you go up to try to annihilate Israel. That's what's going to happen. Now, remember now, 
Everybody living is not going to do that. But every nation that hates God and his Christ and Israel, they're going to be involved in this. You know why? Because remember, who's going to get them to the valley of Armageddon? God, God why? Because God is getting ready to wipe out all the wicked. He's getting ready to, to purify the earth with the wicked. Because he's given the human race a chance to call on Jesus. And that's why you said, hear me say, every one of these nations, Every one of these nations that do not believe that Jesus is the Christ going to be subject to be in that battle. They're going to be invited to the valley of Jehoshaphat because God going to do it. Why? Because remember, God's main purpose, what we just read. Okay. Who, okay, who's blessed? No. Those that have the testimony of Jesus. We, just, we went all the way to the end and read to you all. And see, if you don't believe it, you got a hard time with this. You're unbelievable. What I'm telling you is if you ain't saved and Jesus is not your testimony, you're going to hell. And I'm not talking about somebody you talked about. But I'm talking about really saved. Somebody that's really saved and Jesus is your Jesus. The rest of you, you're going to hell. And everyone, every human being that, you notice, we're going to go, we have to go back and read it. The Bible says your sons, your daughters, your mama, everybody that do not, it ain't about God. It says that do not have the testimony of Jesus. The only ones God going to come back to save, the only ones that God's going to come back, Jesus going to come back for, are those that have the testimony of Jesus. He ain't talking about you hypocrites sitting in here or out there. Oh, he, he's not talking about the crowd. He, he's not talking about largest Baptist church. Oh, when you, He's talking about those that have the, that are really saved. And they are saved, and Jesus is in there. He's talking about those, all they want to do is talk about Jesus from the heart. What the world don't want. What leadership don't want. Oh, Donald Trump ain't going to heaven. Not until he gets saved. But neither Nancy Pelosi. Or Hillary or Bill. None of your your sons and daughters ain't going to heaven until you get. Listen to me close, man. Will you hear what the Bible is saying? Go back to Revelation. Let's go back. To, listen. Go back. To, all of this for what we read, what's happening now, has nothing to do about God. It all has to do with Jesus the Christ. And those of you that don't believe it, don't worry about it. You won't meet him anyway. Go back to Revelation. Now let's go back to Revelation. Let's read it again. Revelation 19, verse 10. It says, And I fell, fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thy do it not. I am thy fellow servant. And this is the angel talking to John. And of thy brethren that has what? Start right there. That has the test. Okay, what's the testimony of Jesus? Jesus, the testimony of Jesus, the prophecy of Jesus, is Jesus has been birthed in your heart. Jesus has been, you are born again. And testimony means the witness. Automatically, it is inside of you. The witness of Jesus is in something that never happened to you before. If you were never born again. And if you say you born again. And you don't have that in you. You ain't born again. 
Why do you think the Bible said Christ dwell in our hearts by who? Not God, but Christ dwell in our spirits by, okay. He is really, really there. Before I got saved, I, was n I never thought about Jesus. Why? He wasn't there. Even if you mention it, I forgot it before you finished saying it. He was not. But when you become born again, the Holy Spirit puts inside of you the wit, the testimony of Jesus. So now you can start telling people from your heart about you got Jesus saved. Not you churchgoers, but real Christians. The real Christians. And those are the ones that's going to heaven. And it's all about that. In every nation, I don't care what nation it is, that do not carry that testimony, not of God, but of Jesus Christ, is going to hell. Everyone. The, nowhere in the Bible you see anything, any difference, all right? Now this, it says, it says, and I fell at his feet to worship him, and he said unto me, see that thou do it not. I am thy angels talking to you. I'm, thy, I'm your servant just like you are. And of thy brethren that has the testimony of Jesus Christ, worship God. He said, worship God. For the testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. If you are a real Christian, a, not a church guru, not a religious person, if you are a real Christian, Jesus lives inside of you to the point that I don't care where you go, he's there, and he's your main, that's who you want to talk about. Before you got saved, you didn't want to talk about him. And if you don't want to talk about him now, it's because, thank you, thank you, you ain't saved. You ain't, you, you, what you're doing, you're judging yourself by man's doctrine, all right? Okay, now, now understanding this, okay, <laughs> understanding this, then, Revelation 20 and 4. Let me go slow with this. Revelation 20 and 4. Listen. Now, we're talking about what's going to happen in the future. Oh, and this is guaranteed. <laughs> and I saw thrones, thrones, okay, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for what? That's the testimony of Jesus. You know what it's saying? That there were people that died because they stood up for when the world and religion didn't want it. When man didn't want to hear about Jesus. That's how hateful the devil is when it concerns Jesus. And when the devil is in you, he hates Jesus. So he ain't going to motivate you to talk about Jesus. Why? He hates him. But one thing he can't do. He might stop you, but he can't stop Jesus. That's why I hate it. You know how somebody beat you up and you can't beat them? <laughs> Listen, it says this. And for the word of God, which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark unto their forehead, in their hand. Okay, now let's stop right there for a minute. Let's get back on this. So now, okay, everything is centered around Jesus. In the Old Testament, God did a lot of things along with Christ. But God was the main subject. In the New Testament, Jesus is the main subject. And every one of these folk that is not born again, if we are not born again, we going to hell. That's all to it. And we don't have Jesus in our heart. And if you don't if you're not saved, you don't, want, you don't care nothing about Jesus. Why? You ain't saved. You a devil. All right? Any, any other question? That was a good, that was a good question because that's what the world is doing. Come out the third world war. And say, mm -mm -mm. No. The battle that, that, the battle that God is going to do has nothing to do with man starting it. God is leading the wicked to the valley of Jehoshaphat. He's, 
the wicked going to end up there. No matter how many U-turns they make, because they're wicked and they hate Christ, they're going to end up there. All right? All right. Any other question before we move on? Another question. Okay, now, we finished talking about how Israel was doing what? They were praying. They were praying to the Lord. They were praying, Lord, we need deliverance. We, we, our weapons are failing us. All of our technology, all of those that was going to come and help us, are failing us. Lord, we need your help. They were, they were down to their last desperate act. So what they did. And what you think the next thing was? <laughs> then heaven opened. And behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon that horse was called faithful and true. Now this is how it's going to happen. He that sat upon that horse was called faithful and true. Now go back to Revelation chapter 19. Now they prayed. Revelation 19. Verse 11. And I saw heaven open, and behold a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness he does judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was with the vesture now, I want you to make a note of the vesture wasn't colored blood. It was dipped in. I want you to make a note of that. In blood. And his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven did what? Now, notice it says the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses clothed with fine linen white and clean. Now stop right there for a minute. Now let's go back to Joel. Let's go back. Here's what they prayed. Now, before we go to Joel, let, let's go to Zechariah, then we're going to go to Joel, back, chapter 14, all right? They're going to pray. Not the world going to pray, but Israel going to pray. And Christ coming back with his army. Now, Joel chapter 14, verse 3. Then shall the Lord, now let's read verse 2, go back and then come to verse 3. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle. The city shall be taken, the houses rifled, and the women ravished. And half of the city shall go forth into captivity. And the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Now we just read and explained to you what's happening. They prayed. And then verse 3. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations. As when he fought in the battle, in the day of battle. Verse 4. And his feet shall stand 
in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east. He, okay. He, let, me, let me read. Okay. On the east, and the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof towards the east and towards the west. What cleave mean? It's going to separate, all right? And towards the west, and there shall be a very great, and half of the mountain shall remove towards the north, and half towards the, all right. Now, so Jesus coming back, heaven open, Jesus coming back, and he's going to set his feet upon Mount Olive. Because he's getting ready to do battle. Now let's go back. Let's go back to Joel. <laughs> now, the Bible says in Revelation 19 that he's bringing his army with him. Now, we're going to show you how powerful his army is because the Bible gives a description of the ability of his army. Joel chapter 2, <laughs> like no other army. In the book of Joel chapter 2, it starts off saying, Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. Folks, this is going to happen. The day of the Lord is when Jesus come back to take vengeance. Have nothing to do with the rapture. It's when Jesus comes back and put down all these human beings that refuse to get saved. All these human beings that refuse to make Jesus their Lord. Folks, it ain't about God. It's all about Jesus. It's not even about Israel. It's about Jesus. It's about Jesus. That includes Israel. All right? So now, it says, it says, a day of, now this is what's going to happen. A day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness, as the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong. The, now notice it says, as <laughs> the morning spreads upon the mountain. That means at sunrise as the moon you ever seen the sun come up and it just dog to sleep alright listen to this as the morning spread upon the mountains a great people and a strong there has not been even the like neither shall be any more after it even the years of many generations now this is talking about the army with Jesus that come with Jesus there's no, there was no people, no beings like his army. And I want you to know it won't be us. He got his own army. But I want you to listen to this though. A fire, fire devoured before them, and behind them a flame burned. The land is as the Garden of Eden before them, and behind them desolation. Now, I want you, let me say what it says. It's saying this army is so mighty that when they begin to do cleansing, you can have a jungle. I mean, vegetation everywhere. Been it pretty and green. When they come through, nothing going to be left. They're going to do a complete wipeout. They're going to, they now this is describing what's going to happen at the Battle of Armageddon. He's going to wipe, they Grass ain't going to be left. It says, let's read this again. The land is as Garden of Eden in front of them. But when behind them, nothing will grow. There will be no growth at all. That's how powerful this army is going to be. All right? It says this. Yea, and nothing shall you ain't going to get away from them. No, all, all, the enemies, nobody is going to get away. <laughs> they 
going to do a complete wipeout of everything and everybody that's against. Now, it's all about Christ. This, folks, this has nothing to do with God. It's all about those that refuse to make Jesus Christ their Lord. I don't care who you are. You mamas, you ain't going to save your sons. You ain't going to save your daughters, you daddy. You ain't going to even save yourself if you're not saved. You're going to be, if you're over there, now wait a minute now. We're talking about the armies that's going to be over there. We haven't got to the rest of the population yet. We're going to get to that later. But listen, to this. it says, the appearance of them is as the appearance of horses. And as horsemen, so shall they run. And what it's saying, these beings are built, so built. You ever seen a thoroughbred muscular? And you can't outrun them. <laughs> they, they have no tiredness. They don't have the ability to get tired. His arm. They, they do not have the ability to slow down. They came to do one thing. And it has nothing to do with salvation. They came to do one thing, and it's to slaughter. It's to slaughter every human being that's against Christ. All right, listen to what it says this. Like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains shall they leap. Like the noise of a flame of fire that devours the stubble as a strong people set in a raid of battle. Have you ever seen a field on fire? The grass have no chance. And they say, they're talking about the, the army of the enemy. These people, the, the army of Christ, is going to go through the army of the world like fire devouring stubble. So what can our weapons do? Well, it ain't going to be my weapon. It's going to be your devil. Because I ain't against him. I ain't, I ain't got nothing to do with that. Listen, listen, now, listen to this. It says, like verse 5 again, like the noise of chariots on the top of mountain, shall they leap. Like the noise of a flame of fire that devours the stubble as, it, as a strong people set in battle array. It says, before their faces, the people shall be, that means, full of pain. When To look at them, you're going to be hurt. We, now, we're talk, we ain't talking about the rest of the problem. We're talking about the, the mighty men and women that's going to go over there and fight against them in the battle of Armageddon. All right? And we're not talking about Israel's army. We're talking about Christ's army. The one that when heaven go up, the ones that you non-believers don't believe. There's an army up there. He already got his army. All they do, they waiting on his command. And Jesus is waiting on God's time. And then he's coming. But it's going to be during the time when Israel pray. So the, back, the Israel is already going to be surrounded and they're going to be being demolished, torn down. And then they're going to pray. Then when it looks like there's no way out for them, no way out. And that's why the scripture says, then heaven open. That's it, it, when, when Israel began to realize that we're in a death, not, not the Gentiles, not none of us Gentiles, this is all about the Jews. They're going to realize, you know what? We've been wrong. And all them proud and arrogant Jews that said we God's chosen people, but they don't believe in Christ. They're going to realize that Abraham ain't going to help them. That's what they were saying. Jacob ain't going to help them. So now they're calling on God. And when they call on God out of desperation, because no nation going to be able to help them. Then the Bible said, then heaven opened. And then it says, behold, look yonder, a white horse. And there's a man sitting on that white horse. And he's got an army behind him. 
Folk, people going to see that. Unless you blind, you might even get healed at that time. If you are. Now listen, to, it says, okay. Their, verse 6, be, before their face, the people shall be much pain. All faces shall gather blackness. They shall. The, okay, when it says all faces shall gather blackness, you ain't never been scared before. You know what I'm saying? People are going to be so scared, they're going to be able to see nothing. They're going to be able to see, but they're, going, they're not going to be able to comprehend. It's going to be like just complete, I can't see what's in front of me. The scene is going to be so awesome that their mind going to go blank, like blackness. That's what that means. Any question before we move on? Now, we're just telling you what's going to happen. Go ahead. So, Apostle, when you're, just for understanding, when you say that um, the Jews are going to pray, is that a way of them accepting Jesus Christ? Right. They, they are beginning now. It's the beginning process. Because even after they pray, a lot of them still going to die. Because the, the battle still going to be going on. And that's why the Bible said, when it's all over with, a remnant, a small amount of Jews is going to be saved. The most, most of the Jews are going to be wiped out. Most of them, you think the Holy Cross was something? You ain't, this, this battle ain't nothing like that. Most of the Jews are going to be wiped out. Why? You know why? Because of their stubbornness. They hard-headed. Remember, Jesus went to them first. And they flat out rejected him as a nation. Now, there are some Jews that saved. But as a nation, the Jews are not saved as a whole. Now, wait a minute. But then that don't leave us out. Because, see, once he left the Jews, he came to America. But America doing the same thing. The same thing. The same thing. Now, that's why the scripture said we ain't going to escape. You, your sons and daughters and you that are not saved, if this, if this battle actually started next week, you ain't saved, you're going to hell. You're going to be lost. Now, let's move on. Let's move on. Okay, it says, all right. Verse 7. They run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of war. Okay. These soldiers won't need ladders to climb high walls. They, they are so skillful and equipped, nothing is going to stop them. If you in Israel or in that area and you're trying to hide under a table because you on, you're in a 10-story building, there's no help for you. That's why in Revelation, the Bible says that people are going to be asking mountains, rocks to fall on them. That's how awesome. And let me tell you, not one human being, not no living human being is going to be a part of his army. His army is coming straight. They're already up there waiting on their signal to come. Now listen to this now. It says, that, it says they run like mighty men, they shall climb the wall like men of war. And they shall march every one of them on his way. If every one of them know what they're supposed to do. There will be no confusion. It's just, it, it's going to be like a parade. You see a parade, how they march in all of them. But it's going to be in battle. Now, wait a minute. You don't do that in battle. When you're in battle, you don't march in order like that. Because it's nothing but chaos around you. But these going to be so orderly, they're going to be like a parade in the midst of the heated battle. All right, wait a minute. It says this. You know, they're not going to be afraid. They're not going to be uh, confused. And they go, and each one of them knows their objective. There will be no disorder at all in this group. It says, They shall march everyone in his way, 
and they should not break. I don't care what, if America's involved, I don't care what they throw at them. I don't care what Russia throw at them. I don't care what Germany, all y'all weapons, all y'all conventional weapons ain't going to do nothing to them. Ain't going to stop them. I don't care what you come up with, it ain't going to stop All your space technology, none of that. This army cannot be defeated. And they're going to try to. They're going to throw everything they can, but they, they won't break rank. They'll, and the thing about it, there will not be one feeble, one among them. Every one of them going to be courageous and strong as courageous they are. Listen to what it says they're going to do. It says, neither shall one thrust another. They shall walk everyone in his path. In other words, they're not going to be any of You know, like sometimes you hear soldiers get killed by friendly fire. Not this. Not this. When you hear about soldiers being killed by friendly fire, it's because confusion was somewhere. Confusion is the author of friendly fire. They call it friendly fire, but somebody got confused. Somebody was out there lack of knowledge, all right? It says, Neither shall one thrust another. They shall walk everyone in his path. And when they fall upon the sword, they shall not die. If they get hit, I don't care what you throw at them. It ain't going to hurt them. This army is invincible. This army can, there will be no casualties, no loss at all. all. If it's 10,000, and the reason why I said 10,000, because I read a scripture that talks about 10,000. <laughs> the Lord coming. With 10,000. And it could be more. I'm not saying that's how much it's going to be. But if he started with 10,000, he's going to end up with 10,000. There will be no injuries or nothing to them. Because these things that we got ain't, won't harm them at all. Listen to what it says. It says, they run to and fro. Okay. They run to and fro in the city. They shall run up the walls. They shall climb up on the houses. They shall, they shall either, even, okay, they shall enter in at the windows like a thief. Nothing going to, uh, you can board your house up. You ain't going to stop them. You can change, you can, well, where's Scotty at? You can well your, well, well up the windows. That ain't going to stop them. There you go. They ain't going to stop them. Nothing we do, nothing you do will stop them. That's our power. They coming in anyway. It says this. It says, The earth shall quake before them. The heavens shall tremble. The sun and the moon shall be dark. And the stars shall withdraw their shining. And the Lord shall utter his voice before. If you didn't understand who army it is, it just told you. Before his army. Before his army. It says, for his camp is very great. For he is strong that execute his, wow, his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. Who can abide? Who can live through this? Now, remember now, all of this is going to be taking place over in the east. Around the valley of where? Jehoshaphat, the battle of Armageddon. And when you begin to understand what's happening here, it, for me, it shows me how awesome Christ is. And it also helps me to understand that Listen, every one of these people that do not confess Jesus, that do not have the testimony of Jesus going to hell, absolutely every, everything is about Jesus. 
It ain't about the Holy Ghost, angels, me or you, God the Father. It's not even about Israel. It's all about Jesus. And that's why it's so important to make sure if you ain't saved, you need to be saved. And let me tell you something. Salvation means that Jesus is a part of you. And you don't give a hill of beans what the world think about what you say about Jesus. In other words, the world can't stop you. It can't make you afraid. Why? Because you understand how important Jesus is. See, religion don't teach you that. Religion teach you God, 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 God. Why? Because, see, the Muslims got a God. The Hindu got a God. All those folk got a God. And so when you say God, they can relate to that. But when you said Jesus, all hell break out. All demons and de devils in your area get at attention. Why? Because, see, it was Jesus that made an open show of them. And that's why I'm telling every, you know what? If your sons and daughters go to heaven and they're not saved, Apostle Bush going to hell. If your, if your mama or daddy go to heaven without Jesus, Apostle Bush going to hell. Because I'm preaching and teaching a false gospel. And I'm convinced I ain't going to hell. I want you to understand this with a passion. Because some of you still think that religion is going to help your son or daughter get to heaven. Religion is teaching your son or daughter to go to hell. That's what religion is doing. Relig That's why some of you have got comfortable and refused to carry the testimony of Jesus Christ. And when you got the testimony of Jesus Christ, and let me tell you something, you prophesy here to you. You don't have the testimony of Jesus, you're going to hell. Every one of you, every one of you leaders, and every one of you out there, I don't care whether you agree with it or not, Every one of you that do not have the testimony of Jesus, in hell will you lift up your eyes. Your mama, your daddy, your husband, your education, no ability, nothing. And that's why when I look at them leaders, I'm not, I don't have to ask you, are they saved, like these foolish hypocrites do. If you say you got the testimony of Jesus, and you know what? It is a lie. In other words, you don't get scared because the crowd don't like it. You're not ashamed to talk about Jesus out there. Who Jesus. That's why he said, if you be ashamed to honor me out there, any question before we move on? And what I like about it, the Lord has given us an open book revelation of step by step how it's going to be. So from now when you hear, then the heavens will open, it's because they prayed. They were brought down. See, Israel was a proud, and still proud and arrogant. Arrogant nation. They were brought down to the place where they realized, ain't nothing else I can do. The Bible calls it in Psalm 51 a broken spirit. They were so scared. They were so full of fear because all their technology, all of their inventions that they got from America, that wherever, none of it worked. America didn't even work. America is not going to deliver them. America don't have the ability to deliver them. You know why? Because God ain't going to let them. Jesus is going to deliver Jerusalem. And Israel just going to be in. Jesus is going to show these heathens that Jerusalem is his capital city. Regardless whether you vote for it or not. Regardless whether you, it's, it's all about, I'm telling you folks, it's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. Any question before we move on?
But we got a lot more to go. And what I like about it, in my heart, like some of you, I can look in your spirit and see you thinking about your husband and wife, they going to hell, heaven and hell. You a liar. Your son or daughter going to hell. You a liar. Ain't no, let me tell you this. Let me tell you about y'all false gospel that your people get. The Bible says they're going to hell just like the ones that give it to them. You ain't got to believe it. You're going to. The blind lead the blind. And that's why you don't see no call out there for Jesus. When you go back, all your life, what do you see out there? All these so-called hypocrites. All these so-called people that's supposed to be saved and full of God. Celebrate Christmas. But don't talk about Jesus. All this paganism and stuff, folks. But the moment you start talking about Jesus, the moment you start telling folk that's not saved, well, I don't talk about other people's religion. I do. I talk about every one of them. And I talk about mine, too. Because mine pure. And I don't care whether you call me judgmental, because I am. The word teaching me how to judge. So all your stupid, ignorant philosophy don't even bother me. Why? Because the word brought me to that place. Now, if I was like some of you, I didn't have trust in the word, I'd be flaky like some of you. But I ain't. I know, like, wait, Paul ain't got to, I am fully persuaded. That this gospel is right. And every one of you against this gospel is just wrong. And every one of you sympathetic, religious, soulish-minded folk. Let me tell you what you can't do. You can't vote Jesus out. I don't care what you like about what he said. You can't dethrone him. He's there for not the long haul, forever. So any question before we move on? Because there's a lot we got to cover. Now, now let's move on to, let's go to Joel, Joel chapter 3. Well, excuse me. Let's go back to Joel chapter 2, all right? And then, will we just finish this? Let's go. So much we got to get through here. Let's see here. It says, back to chapter 2, okay? It says this. Verse 12, therefore also now, says the Lord, turn you even to me with all your heart and with fasting and with weeping and with mourning. Now, somebody asked about getting saved earlier. They're going to get saved. Then they're going to start turning to Jesus. That's when Whatever is, or whoever is left, whoever is left, and we know it was a small amount, they're going to get saved. It says, turn ye to me with all your heart, and with fasting and with weeping, and with mourning, and rent your heart and not your garment, and turn unto the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and repent of the evil. Who knows if he will return and repent and leave a blessing behind him, even a meat offering and a drink offering unto the Lord your God. Now, when this happened, Israel, when all this, now wait a minute here, you're going to see him coming down out of heaven. And then he's going to start delivering you. And then he's going to tell you, you need to get saved. You, 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 really, you really need to get saved. You really need to get saved. Now I want you to go to chapter 3. In chapter 3. Now, in chapter 3 of Joel, it says this. It says, for behold, in those days, verse 1, and in that time, then I will bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem. I will also gather all nations and will bring them down 
into, again, the Valley of Josephine. So you can look on your map and tell where the battle of Arthur, the last battle going to be. And we'll plead with them there for my people and for my heritage, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. Now what I want you to see here, he said, and parted my land. In other words, my father gave land to Israel, but y'all took it and gave the other nation. Oh, I'm going to deal with you for that. My father gave land to Israel, but you all came along and took it and parted it. Oh, Jesus. He says, and they have cast lots for my people and have given a boy for an harlot and sold a girl for wine that they might drink it. Now what this is saying is this. They have taught my people corrupt ways. They have taught my people unholy ways. They have taught my people things that my God did not teach. That, that's why, let me, let me tell you all something. God, well let God tell you something. When God created a human being, he created a human being perfect. And let me tell you what's going to happen to some of the unsaved. If you ain't saved, you know how you mess up your body outside and inside. Outside, you tattoo your body. You know what? God know how to deal with your tattoo body. Now, I'm talking about those you ain't saved. Now, if you saved, you cover by the blood. But if you are not saved, let's say if you're not saved and you smoking reefer. When the Lord told you the Lord told you that the body he created, we ain't talking about your spirit yet, but the body he created is a temple of God. And if you defile that body, God going to, he going to destroy you. See, that's why the devil got a miracle running after reefer. Drugs now. That's, that's, you know, back in the day, reef ain't no new thing. They just call it a different name. In Rome, they smoke weed. We, we, in China, they smoke weed. We, they've been doing, you know what? The devil been, the devil been around, the devil was around before weed was. Do y'all understand that? The devil knows what it takes to mess up your body and your mind. He knows that. He knows what it takes. But the devil's objective is everything. Now, hold on for a minute. God said the devil going to make sure that a human being do different. Because the devil hate God. He can't stand Jesus. But he hate God. And that's why he tried to be like God. Because he hate God. He tried to be like, you ever tried to be like somebody you him and you couldn't? All of a sudden you start hating. Well, the devil, devil hate God. And everything God said about was precious, the devil want to take it and step on it. And that's why when, okay, when Go to the book of 2 Thessalonica right quick. 2 Thessalonica. You ain't going to hear this in y'all religious churches. Because they ain't got enough sense. A lot of them. Well, if they religious, none of them. And I know we on the air too. That's why people are dying for, my people perish for the lack of knowledge.
You know, one reason why people don't like to hear the truth because it bothers them. <laughs> and people don't want to be bothered. People just, <laughs> people just don't want to be bothered. Lord, bother me. I'd rather for you to bother me and I'll be with you in glory <laughs> than to go to hell. Mm. Let's see, where should we start at? Okay, because I don't want to get into another, I want to stay right here on this subject. Okay, let's read verse 7 and 8 of 2 Thessalonica chapter 2, verse 7 and 8, because there's so much in here, and you end up in a whole new different direction. We're going to stay right here. Chapter 2, verse 7 says, for the mystery of iniquity does already work. Only he who now lets will let until he be taken out of the way. Now notice it said, for the mystery of iniquity does already work. Now let me tell you what it's saying. <clears throat> it's saying, for the hidden, mystery is hidden. See, the hidden plans of wickedness is already working. It's working, and people can't see it. Meaning this, those of you that did not understand or do not understand what's taking place now, it's because the devil have them blind. Jesus said it this way to the Pharisee. He said, you can discern where it's going to rain, but you're blind to the what time it is. And that's why all these folks you see that's in an uproar by Jerusalem, and even those of you that didn't know or don't believe it, it is because the hidden wisdom of the devil is keeping you blind. The God of this world still got you blind when you can't comprehend even after it's said. That's why Jesus told the people, he said, listen, why is it that you can't understand my speech? Is it because you can't? What he was saying was, why can't you understand what is really happening? Even after I told you what is really happening, you still can't understand what's really happening. You know why? Because the enemy take away the ability for you to see or for you to understand. So to you, it's not real. So now the mystery of iniquity, notice it says, does already work. All right? It says, only he who now led us will let till he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wickedness be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the and shall destroy the brightness back to the battle again. God, okay, when Jesus, the second event, Jesus is coming back to destroy, to take vengeance against those that took vengeance against him. So all of you, boys and girls, men and women, that do not believe in Jesus in your heart, if that would take place tomorrow, the Lord coming against you. So, like the scripture says, who can stand? <laughs> who can stand against God? Now, all of this is happening. For a reason. Now let's go back to um, Zechariah, and then we're going to close for tonight. We got some more 
we're going to cover next week. Let's go back to Zechariah. Hmm. Zechariah chapter 14, again. Now, we, every, they fighting against Israel. They fighting against Jerusalem. They, they want to take Jerusalem. Because Jerusalem is where Jesus is going to rule forever. And if Jesus is not in Jerusalem, Jesus ain't going to rule. Because Jesus is not going to rule in North Dakota. God did not prophesy and say Jesus was going to rule in New York City or in D.C. He said Jesus is going to rule in Jerusalem. So if the devil can get Jerusalem out from under the hand of Jesus, God is a lie. And then everything else God did and said is a, so that means God is no longer God. Things change. In the book of Zechariah 14, beginning with verse 12, it says, And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Oh, every person that fought against Jerusalem, this is what's going to happen to them. Their flesh shall consume away while they standing on their... Now, if you don't understand what that means, that means your flesh is going to start peeling off your body. It's going to start dropping off, off your body. You ain't got to believe it, but God said it. While they standing on their feet, their eyes shall consume away in their holes. That means in your sockets, your eyes are going to start, you ain't going to have an eyeball. Their tongue shall consume in their. Now you ain't got to believe this. But your belief won't stop this from happening. Whether you believe it or not. That's what's going to happen. That, that's what's going to happen. That's what's going to take place. Now next week we're going to pick up here. And then we're going to. Talk about the, the rest of the living. Now that was going to happen to those that fought against Jerusalem. But then there's rest of the living that's going to be alive that didn't go to battle. We're going to see what the Bible is going to say about. And it says it. Any questions? That means everybody, some of y'all look pale. <laughs> you know, get saved. You don't see me looking pale. I look rosy and <laughs> cheerful. Upbeat. Get saved. Really get saved. I thank the Lord for revealing this the way he did. So every one of you can see, when the Bible said then heaven opened, there's something happened before the then. <laughs> and Jesus came down. We ain't got to his vesture dipped in blood yet. 
The Bible even shows you what happened. All of that is in your Bible. All that is in your Bible. Some of you thought his vesture was blood red. It wasn't. That's why I said dip in. So we open the floor for any question you might have to help. Because Jesus is coming back, folks. And he's coming back for a people without spot or wrinkle. And he's not asking none of us at all. He's not begging none of us to get saved. Not at all. You won't find nowhere in Scripture from in the beginning to amen. You won't find one Scripture where Jesus begged any human being to get saved. Because he don't have to. He's Jesus all by himself. And you might have an attitude like you Jesus. But you ain't. Any question before we close? How many of you understood this so far? You got a picture in your mind. Well let me say this to you. If you understand it. Understanding comes through Is Courtney here tonight? She working? Oh, tell them what understanding means. That shows you understanding. Not when you say you understand it, but when you utilize it. That shows that you really understand. Because some of you going to leave here with no understanding. The devil done snatched it already. He done took it away. He done took it away. And we trying to help you to see from that corner to that corner back yonder to understand you can't do nothing against the word of the Lord. The human race can't do nothing against the word of the Lord. There's no, there's not enough of us. There's not enough of us. So if you're trying to get an army together, remember this. There's not enough of us. There'll never be enough of us. Jeez. And I thank the Lord for being on Jesus' side. I thank the Lord for, for really understanding who it's all about. And it's about Jesus. It is about Jesus. So any question y'all have, feel free to ask pertaining to the word. Not your foolishness. The word. And we will help you, all right? Yes, go ahead. Apostle, is that like in Isaiah when he said, everybody together is but a drop? All nations together like one little drop in a bucket. All that means all your kinfolk, all your aunts, uncles, you, your your people you think cousins, you y'all cousins, all that. You know we might we might be cousins, or you know we might you know maybe down the line, if you if you want to do a what they call that a what, what you call a DNA check or what or whatever history and stuff. <laughs> everybody, everybody. It's like a drop in a bucket. I thank the Lord for Jesus. I really thank the Lord for Jesus Christ. I thank the Lord for salvation. I really thank the Lord for salvation. You know, I was talking to the Andersons yesterday. I'm going to tell you, tears came down my eyes. You know why? I, I understood I don't need you, but I need him. I understood over again I don't need but I definitely need him. In my spirit, there's a meaning. It's like another level. Hey, I don't care what you say. I don't care what you think. I don't even care what you say about me. Because you ain't my life. See, some of y'all got your life tied up in other people's lives. That's why you can't do what you want to do. Do what you should do. Jesus is my life. 
That's why I don't follow fool and ignorant people. I just ain't following you. I'd rather walk up the road than to ride in your wagon down the hill. And while I'm going up the road, I'll get exercise. And while you riding in your wagon down the hill, the tide gonna come off and you gonna go off the cliff. And I'm gonna be up the road looking down at you. Folks, I don't care what the world say, I don't care what religious folks say, it's all about Jesus. And those of you that's sitting in here that's not saved, you are foolish. You ain't right. And I'm telling you to your face, don't you ever think you're going to persuade Apostle Bush to do anything. You ain't. Not anything. At all. I don't take your counsel, your advice. I don't take nothing from you. I close my book on you and open up, bless this man that walk not in the counsel of the ungodly. I just open my book up. Ooh, gee, I got the right to open my book up. And that's one of the pages in my book. I am saved. It's just Jesus Christ. And that's why I, I don't mind being challenged. I don't mind where well, I can't stop being attacked. But that's all right. The more I'm attacked, the more glory I get because I'm a sin. And you ought to do the same thing. So when you go back out there, I I pray like Apostle Paul said in 2 Corinthians 13. I pray that each one of you examine yourself to see are you in the. I will I really check myself out. I will really check myself to make sure I'm saved because if you say you say, but if you're not, you ain't. And when you say there's a difference. I ain't like some folks. I don't know whether they save or not. If I be around you long enough, I know whether you save or not. How you know you God? No, but I know God. <laughs> I know God. And his word tell me whether you saved or not. It said by your fruit. I'm going to stare him. <laughs> I said, Lord, I thank God for this word. I really do. I really thank the Lord for Jesus. I do. I thank the Lord. I can't get enough of it. And the more he teaches me and tell me to give it to you all, I'm going to give it to you so you can know. Now you're going to walk out here with a greater understanding of then the heavens open and why. And, folks, that's going to happen. You know, you, we look at all these movies and stuff, but that's really going to happen. That's what's going to happen. One day it's going to happen. In Israel, Jerusalem, being the city of God, is just God have turned his face back to that nation. He's paying, that means that you know what? The times of the Gentiles is about over. Our time is about up. You go back and read Romans 11. The Bible says that he's going to deal with Gentiles until the time of Israel comes again. So now he's turning to Israel. He's paying attention to Israel now. And he's setting Israel up for those that's going to be saved. That's what he's doing. That's exactly what he's doing. I look at some of you sons and daughters, and they just as unsaved as some of you are. I'm being honest with you. I pray for this body because some of you in here, yeah, I'm telling you, you ain't saved. You're not, you're religious, but you ain't saved. You just ain't saved. You ain't saved. The fruits ain't in you. They're just not in you. You're not saved. You're not saved. You ain't got to take my word for it. Read the word. 